grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. We meditate on the gospel appointed for this Sunday, specifically these words from the text of St. Luke. When you pray, say, Father. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. There are two kinds of prayer. There is the prayer of unbelief and the prayer of faith. A, pray, a prayer from the spirit of the old Adam and a prayer from the spirit of Christ. The prayer of the spirit from the old Adam begins with I. I thank God. I'm not like all others. I just want, Lord, I just want the prayer of the spirit of Christ begins with God. Lord, have mercy. Or, our Father. The prayer of old Adam we know from birth. It comes with our first infant cry that demands attention to confirm that we are the center of the universe. The prayer of Christ from the new man is taught by the Spirit of Christ with sighs and groanings too deep for words. The prayer of the old Adam resembles very much the prayer of the Pharisee in the temple, proudly praying, I thank God I'm not like other men. I tithe, I associate with the right people. I support the right causes. I vote for the right candidates, I read the right books, I subscribe to the right magazines and confessions, and I signal my superior virtues. <laughs> oh yes, and I'm thankful I'm not like that tax collector over there. <laughs> the prayer of the old Adam in us prays, my will be done. The prayer of unbelief seeks results, signs, wonders. Name it and claim it. Believe it and it's yours. And if not, you don't have faith. The prayer of faith is self-denying and without credentials. It's the public, that guy back there, beating his breast with tears of sorrow, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Tears streaming down his face. It is the one who stares at his shoes, barely able to keep his eyes lifted toward heaven, who can only stammer out, God be merciful. It's the prayer of the desperate father of a sick child who says, I don't know how, but Lord, do it. The grieving mother whose only son is being carried to the grave. The scorned sex worker who dared to wash Jesus' feet with her tears and dry them with her hair. It's the thief on the cross, his life ebbing away in shameful and cursed death as a terrorist, a murderer, an insurrectionist. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. It's the cry of the forlorn one who does not know how to pray nor what to say. The prayer of faith knows it knows not. It knows not how to pray. It hasn't the right words, but recognizes that whatever words are said, and while however we speak, sing, or chant them, the Spirit gathers them up and takes them before the High Priest, Jesus Christ, and then interprets them for us. To the unbelieving world, the prayer of faith appears to be religious insanity. To a religious world, quotes around religious, the prayer of faith almost seems shameless, reckless, even somewhat cheeky. How dare you call upon the almighty creator of the universe as dear dad, papa, daddy. Yet Jesus says when you pray, say that. In the Greek, it's dear dad. The son knows what pleases the father, and it 
pleases the father to hear his children cry, Papa, dear dad. And it pleased the father to send his son into the world to bear your sin in his flesh so that all who believe on his name will have the right to say, Father, our Father, because of Christ. By virtue of their baptismal adoption papers, you are baptized into Christ, my dear brothers and sisters, and that makes all the difference. For there you receive the spirit of adoption, the spirit that cries out from within you, Abba, Father. You are a child of God, God's beloved child. When you pray, the son says, Dad, take this. He's part of the family. You may call God Father with delight. It's been given to you that privilege in the water of baptism when our Father was spoken over you and entrusted to you to pray as one of the family. You may call God Father and come to Him as dear children come to their dear Father in heaven. Maybe your Father in that first birth was not so approachable or even available. Maybe He hurt or abused you in some way and gave you a scorpion when you asked for an egg or a serpent instead of a fish. Maybe He hit you rather than embrace you, or put you down when he should have picked you up. But your Father in heaven is the one who runs down the road to embrace his prodigal sons and daughters. He is the Father who goes to the field to seek the lost religious son and plead with him to come to join the party for his brother. He is the Father who sent His Son into the world, not to condemn the world, but to, not to rehabilitate the world, not to even transform the world, nor to fix the world, but that the world might be saved through His dying and His rising. The prayer of faith, therefore, is indeed reckless, bold, shameless. You don't have a single chip in front of you, but you play the hand anyway. You have nothing with which to bribe the king, yet you stand before him and dare to say, Our Father. As if you were his child, because that is who Jesus says you are. It's Father Abraham, as you heard earlier, negotiating with God over Sodom and Gomorrah. How about 50? 45, 40, 30, 20, 10. Your sin is exchanged for Christ's righteousness. And the Lord says, for the sake of 10, I will not destroy it. That's the confidence, the holy chutzpah, if you will, of prayer. For the sake of that one righteous man, God saved the world. Your sin is exchanged for Christ's righteousness. In Him you were washed by water and the Spirit, by which that old Ad -Ad Adamic flesh that clings to each one of us is put off in Christ. For you were buried with Christ in baptism and raised with Him through faith. In Christ, old Adam is crucified again and again, and you are raised up, glorified, seated at the right hand of the Father. And the Holy Spirit intercedes for you too, you who are the baptized. Of this you can be certain. And with the Spirit you have the Son, Jesus, your elder brother, your Savior, to intercede. And with the Son you have the Father who has sent Him. The persons of God are indivisible. Where one is, there are the other two. The trinity of the persons abides in you. You bear that name, the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And your life is hidden with Christ in God, and God is hidden in you. This is the double mystery of faith and the great secret of prayer. And you, like Abraham, must pray for the world in which we live.
they cannot pray for themselves. For their prayer, if it is even uttered, is a prayer of unbelief, not one of faith. So only you, the faithful, can pray. For you are God's child, chosen, forgiven, holy, elect in Christ his Son. And it is in Christ and through him and with him that you pray with all the holy chutzpah of dear children coming to their Father in heaven saying, Dear Dad, I'm here again. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now may the peace of Christ, which surpasses all human understanding, keep our hearts and minds in true faith in Him unto life everlasting. Amen.